Welcome to the IM2 video lecture. This is going to be covering the simplify expression with radical exponents part one. Here the learning target is for you to understand the radical. There are three success criteria. Can you convert from the radical exponent to just a radical? Uh, you can simplify a radical and you can simplify a radical with a fraction in it. We'll review a eighth grade core concept. The exponent of a number shows how many times you can use that number in a multiplication. So you might see something as x squared. Here the base is x and 2 is the exponent also referred to the index as well as the power. So here you could say x to the power 2, x exponent 2, or x squared. In the x squared, the exponent of 2 says to use the base x twice in a multiplication. So x squared is equal to x times x. The x is used twice in a multiplication. We've seen this in algebra. 8 squared is equal to 8 times 8, which is equal to 64. Geometrically, it's like asking find the area of a squared with length 8. The formula for the area is side squared. Plug in the side value of 8 inches. 8 squared is 64 inches squared. So the exponent, the squared, is referred to finding the area of a square. Now we're going to explore the nth of a function, or otherwise the radical. We'll start off with working backwards from our previous slides. Now we're asked to find the length given the area of the square. The area of this square is 36. So what we did is we saw two numbers that multiply together. That makes 36, which is 6. So we say the length here is 6. That process of finding a number that you can multiply twice to get that area is this. We can say 36 to the 1 half power is equal to 2 radical 36, and that gets you 6. The way you could think about this is 6 squared is equal to 36. All right, The squared here gets you this value. Or you can write 36 will get you to 6 if you put a 1 half exponent here that will get you to 6 that is the reason why the exponent here is 1 half that 1 half in the exponent tells us to use that base x twice but now in the division that is why you see the divide right here so x to the 1 half power is the same thing as 2 radical x or you could also see it as x to the one-third power is 3 radical x. That's called the cube root. So x is still the base. The one-half exponent is called the square root. And the, this symbol is referred to the radical. So that is the vocab of what the nth function is. The nth function is just having the exponent here as a radical, as a fraction, which can be written as using the radical symbol. How do we see it in a basic problem? Well, we use to simplify the radical. You might see something like number one, where it says radical 45. You could plug this into the calculator and it's going to get you roughly 6.7 in the calculator, but that is useless. What you need to be able to do is break it down. So the idea here is to simplify the radical by breaking it down using perfect squares. The perfect squares here are given in this list. The square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 equals to 2, square root of 9 equals to 3, square root of 16 equals to 4 so on and so on and so on. So let's do number one. We have to break down the square root of 45. What is the square root of 45? What can that be broken down into? 
we saw that the square root of 45 can be broken down into 9 times 5. So it would be square root 9 times 5. Then we can break this. Okay. All I did here is I found their factors, 9 and 5. Then we split this up individually. So square root of 9 times square root of 5. We know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3 right here. So we could write this is just 3. Nothing happens to the square root of 5 because it's a prime number. So we leave it. Square root of 5. And there you go. This process is when you simplify. It's considered simplify because the radical breaks down from 45 into 5, okay? Gets uh, reduced to a lower value, a lower value, okay? The number inside the radical was a 45. Now it became a 5. That's how you simplify it. Let's do um, 2. Same process. We want to split this into two parts. So radical 9x squared is just radical 9 times x squared. Split this apart. It's radical 9 times radical x squared. Radical 9, we saw that. That was just 3. And then we have to understand, what is this? Well, we know that the radical is equal to the one-half exponent, right? So, in this case, the square root of x squared is equal to 2 divided by 2. So this just becomes x. So here, you can just write this becomes just x. What about number 3? Same thing as before. 9 times x cubed, we split it apart, radical 9 times radical x cubed. We know radical 9 became 3 like before. But let's see what we can simplify here. We saw that x cubed is equal to x3, but the radical here means divided by 2. Uh-oh. There's nothing that we can do here. We can't simplify this. 3 over 2 doesn't simplify. Yeah, we could write it as 1.5, but no one writes it like that. So this is bad. So what we can do is we can actually leave it as radical x cubed. Okay? Because you can't break down the number anymore. All right? There you go. This is how you simplify a radical. Let's take a look. Number 11. Number 1. You're all 1 through 6. You're going to simplify the radical. And again, you're going to simplify the radical by breaking it down using its perfect squares. The square root of 75. A lot of students say, hmm, well, I know that 75 can be broken down by, let's say, 10, 15, maybe 15. So you would pick a number like 5 times 15, okay? And then you will break it down to 5 times radical 15, right? This makes, this multiplies to 75, but it doesn't work. You can't reduce this, okay? Because this is not perfect. Can you reduce this? Nope. It's not perfect, so this is bad. The two numbers that we picked here are really bad. We want to make sure that the numbers that we pick, one of them is a perfect square. So I'm going to pick the good numbers now. I'm going to pick the number 25 times 3. The reason why is when I split this up to square root 25 times square root 3. I saw that the square root of 25 is equal to the number 5. So this becomes 5. This becomes radical 3. So this is good. 
Why? Because I was able to reduce the radical 25 to just a 5. Okay. So this is good. Whereas picking 5 and 15 would be not good. Not good. Because there's no perfect square. Let's do number two. If you pick the number five times 10, this is bad. This is not good because none of this is not perfect square. A good value to pick would be two and 25. Twenty five times two. Break it down to square root twenty five times square root of two. Square root of the radical twenty five or the square root of twenty five is just five. Square root of two is just square root of two. So this is good. Notice the radical got simplified. The forty eight the square root of forty eight now I'm just going to pick really pretty numbers. I think 16 can be 48 divided by 16. Yeah, 3. So this, the two numbers I could pick, is 16 times 3. If you pick 4, you would just have to break it down more. So this is just radical 16 times 3. This breaks down to square root 16 times square root of 3. Square root of 16 becomes 4. Radi uh, radical 3 just becomes radical 3. Perfect. This is good. Next part here, we just have some variables. Like before, we split it. So this becomes 25 times x squared. The two parts that this broke up to is square root 25 times square root of x squared. Square root of 25 is just 5. Square root of x squared is just x because again, x is going to, the square root here is just going to be divided by 2. Just becomes x to the 1. Same thing here because this is really a 2 out in front. Okay which is why it's one half. So this breaks down to square root 36, and this is x to the four. Break it down into its two parts, square root 36 times the square root of x to the four. Square root of 36 is six, and then we saw square root of x to the four is just x four divided by two, so it becomes x squared. So this just becomes x squared. Last one, number six. Square root of this, but now we just have to break it up into their three parts. 81 times x to the four times y to the third. All right, so the three pieces, square root 81 times square root x to the four times square root x to the three. A square root of 81 just becomes nine x x to the 4 becomes x to the 2 because this breaks down like before and rather and square root of y cubed we can't do anything so we can just write it as y cubed so the way you see this you will see at 9 x squared radical y to the third so that is how you simplify radical 1 through 3 shows it without a variable 4 through 6 shows it with a variable. Now let's do example 2. This time the radical is, is within a fraction. This time you can still break it apart. So here you it breaks up to a radical 3 on the top and a radical 25 on bottom. You can't redo anything to the radical 3 on top but you know that the bottom that can become 5. 
because we know that the radical 25 is 5. Number 8, same thing. So you can break it up. So on top, it's radical 16 times radical x squared. On bottom, it's just radical 100. All right. So radical 16 becomes 4 times well, we know that radical x squared is just x squared divided by 2. So that's just x. Okay. So this just becomes x. And on bottom, we know that radical 100 is just 10. So we can just write 10 here. That equals to 4 over 10 can be reduced into 2 over 5. So we can write 2 over 5. And the x is still on top. So we just want to make sure we write x there. So this is how you simplify that. All right, it's the same idea, but this time you have to make sure that you're, you're applying the radical to all the terms in the fraction, top and bottom. So let's look at number nine. On top, it breaks down into radical 15, and on bottom, it becomes radical 64. Well, we know what radical 64 is. It's right here. It equals to 8. So, it is as simple as writing. On top, we leave it as radical 15. And on bottom, we write an 8. Perfect. Next term, radical 9 over 25. So, it's radical 9 on top and radical 25 on bottom. We saw radical 9 right here. That equals to 3. And we saw radical 25, or the square root of 25, equals to 5. Next, we split this apart. This is square root 81 and square root of 2. We know that the square roots, or the radical of 81, is 9. So we write a 9 on top. Anything on bottom? No, we leave it as radical 2. This is perfectly fine. You can leave it as radical 2 for right now. So this just becomes 9 divided by radical 2. Number 12. Split this into its two parts. So radical 36 is on top and a radical x squared is on bottom. Radical 36 is just 6. You should see that right here on the list. And on bottom, we should already know that, which is just x. Again, the square root of x squared is the same thing as x squared divided by 2. That just becomes x to the 1, which we can just write as x. All right. Next part. Split this apart into its two parts. A cubed, square root of a cubed, and square root of 49. Well, we can't do anything to the top because that's a odd power so it leaves it at a to the third power radical a to the third power divide by square root of 49 looks like that is seven it's right here so this just becomes seven next we break this up to its part so square root 100 is on top on bottom square root of four times square root of x squared square root of 100 we saw that as 10 on bottom square root of 4 is 2 and x squared just becomes x so we can write this as 10 over 2x which can be simplified into 5 on bottom it's just the x there you go Next, you wanted to describe and correct the error in simplifying this expression. They saw that the radical 72 can be broken down into 4 and 18. The good part is they found the perfect squared, which can be broken down into 2. The problem here is the radical 18. This number can be broken can be broken down more. How it can be broken down more is you can pick two numbers that make up 18. So the next line 
should have be this should have been two radical nine times two split this into two parts radical nine times radical two we know that it this is going to be two right times radical nine is three it's right here and radical two is left alone two times three is six radical two there you go all right and other easy way of doing this is you could have started it as right here 72 radical 72 can be broken down into 36 times 2 which is just radical 36 times radical 2 radical 36 is just 6 radical 2 is left alone you should see here you still get the same answer so there's multiple ways of doing this. Make sure that the value inside the radical here can be broken down, All right? So if it's an even number, be very careful. Even numbers tend to be broken down more, All right? But there you go. That's all, that's everything that you need to do for simplifying expressions and radical exponents, part one.